can pop down if you want. Good morning. Are we live? Are we all on? Hopefully everyone can see and hear us. Right, welcome to the first live streaming service of the Community Church. Um, we're really excited if you are joining us live this morning. Um, I've got my phone with the chat on, so if you um, are on and you're chatting, we can see all the comments that are coming through. We have got a media team, our TCC hosts, who are replying to you, but we can also see as well. Um, so it's just so exciting that we can all be together, albeit remotely, and be worshipping together at the same time. Um, I know we've got Johanna joining us from Holland, and I'm sure there's people all across the country that are joining us on this live streaming. So we're really excited to have you here this morning. Um, I was going to start reading out all the people that are on, but there's so many of you now that it's a bit too difficult. But we're really excited. There's lots of you that have already put prayer requests in. Our media team are praying for you as we speak, as the service goes on. If you feel that you've got any words to bring or anything that you want to say to us, please put it in the comments. We will see it. And where appropriate, we will feed it into the service. We've got Dan is going to speak to us later. So we're in Speaker's Corner, as we have called it. Um, and we're going to be um, kind of leading through the service. And then we've got the worship team um, who are going to lead us in a little bit of worship in a minute. But before we start, um, I'm just going to read a statement. Um, it's also on the website and there's links to it um, on our um, Facebook and all that sort of thing. Um, there have been many, many people that have spent a lot of time um, trying to get this right and trying to comply with the mass of regulations that are out there. Um, and we want to be really clear about what we're doing and why we're doing it. So we wish to confirm that this online service is not a public gathering open to our church family, but is occurring for online broadcasting, live and recorded purposes only. In bringing this online service to you, we are adhering to the government's safe use of places of worship guidelines, which were updated on the 14th of August 2020. This guideline can be accessed via the link that's on the website. And um, on, uh, the, yeah, if you go to TCC online, you'll see the, um, the link. The practices we are employing include social distancing, test and trace, ensuring face coverings are worn where appropriate, so for the PA guys and the media team, they're all in face coverings and will be for the duration of the service. Uh, taking temperatures and hand sanitizing upon entry to Main Street for all those participating in this online service. We are taking relevant precautions to keep all our worship team, PA and media team, speakers and hosts as safe as possible to enable this service to happen. Um, and I did just want to say... We are incredibly grateful and want to say a huge thank you to the many people that have been involved in spending hours going through all of the regulations, drafting risk assessments, getting everything ready. Particularly the worship and media team and the PA team have spent an awful lot of time, as well as the trustees and leaders of the church. And we are really grateful that for all of the effort and the hours that have gone into that so that that enables this to happen. Um, if you look on the chat, you'll see that Scott's just put a comment about pioneering. If I can get back to it. Um, about us being pioneers. And this morning, this is something different for us. This is something where we're stepping into a new thing, a new thing of God, and we want to pioneer. And we would encourage you to pray for that for our church, to join us, to pray with us this morning as we lead. Um, and just as we start, I'm going to just pray and welcome the Holy Spirit here. Wherever you are, wherever you're watching this from, please pray with us. Please sing along with us. Um, we want to connect with you as much as possible this morning. But actually, it's all about connecting with God. And it's all about linking with Jesus and feeling that in, in you. So, Father God, we just come to you this morning and we invite you to this online service. We ask that wherever you are, um, whether you're watching at home or whether you're in groups with your families or whether you're on your own, that the Holy Spirit would connect with you now. Right now, Holy Spirit, we invite you into this place, into Main Street, but also into every home, into every person that's watching this. 
whether they know you or not, Lord, we invite you to come and to start to talk to us this morning, to connect with us this morning. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here. We welcome you into our hearts. We welcome you into our lives again. In your name, Father God, amen.
I will shout, you are worthy of praise in the morning, in the evening, at the end of all days. I will sing, I will shout, you are worthy of
little louder Sing a little louder Sing a little louder Come on sing a little louder Sing a little louder Thank you that you see me. Thank you that you see me and you reach out for me. Thank you, God. And you fight for me. Thank you, God. Scott's just put a verse on the chat which I think is worth reading out. It's from Psalm 23. It says, You prepare a table before me. In the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Father God, we thank you that we can sing in the middle of the storm. Lord, whatever this has looked like for everybody, this lockdown, this period of uncertainty... Lord, we can come to you and we know that you have got us in the palm of your hand. You are preparing a table for us when it feels like we've got enemies pressing in. Lord God, you are our God and we love you, Jesus. Amen. Great is 
praise your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. You never change. You never fail, oh God. Let's sing that again. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. You never change. You never fail, oh God. True are your promises. True are your promises. Change. 
know God is the same today as he was yesterday and he will always be the same wherever you are right now whatever you're doing whatever circumstances you might be in God sees you he loves you he is fighting for you in ways that you could not even possibly imagine he sees you in your lowest of lows and he sees you in your highest of highs every good day you've ever had and every bad day you've ever had he sees you he always has he does right now and he always will and I believe this morning that God wants to meet with you he is desperate to meet with you today maybe you know God and maybe you've met him a thousand times before or maybe you've never experienced God but God wants to meet with you he wants to break through whatever struggles you might be going through whatever things are holding you back whatever might be going on in your life he wants to meet with you he wants you to experience his love he always has he does right now and he always will
I spoke what you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life with me. have been so, so kind to me. Let's sing that again before I spoke the words. Before I spoke the words, you were singing over me. You have been so, so shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me.
reckless love of God. about those words for a minute. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. If this morning you have a broken heart, God wants to meet with you. He wants to restore your heart whatever has been done to you, whatever hurt you might have been through or maybe are going through now, God knows. He sees you, he hears you, he feels what you feel and it breaks his heart knowing how you've been treated or what's been done to to you or the circumstances you maybe find yourself in. But you know, our God is hope. Hope that there is more. Hope that we can be restored in him. However broken we may feel, God's love is more than power enough to meet with us, to heal us, to pick up all the pieces and put us back together again. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope. Every heart that is broken, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. It's your
it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only great are you Absolutely fantastic. I hope you've enjoyed the worship where you are as much as we have here. And it really feels like we've got the presence of God with us. Uh, we've been worshipping our little socks off over here in Speaker's Corner. Um, I'm going to hand over to Dan now to bring us um, what he feels is the word of God for today. But I just wanted to remind you, as you're on the chat, if at any point you want to uh, request a prayer, you can click on the request prayer button. It will take you into a private room and we've got our media team who will then chat to you and pray with you. Um, so at any point during um, the worship or what Dan's saying, if you feel like you would like prayer, um, then obviously you can request that. So I'm just going to pray for Dan uh, and then I'm going to disappear and leave him here to talk to you. So Father God, we thank you that wherever we are, we can connect with you. Thank you for our worship team and um, just for your Holy Spirit this morning. It really feels like we've just connected again and connected with each other again. And uh, wherever we are, Lord, we are part of your family and we're accepted and loved no matter what. And as we hear from Dan this morning, I pray that you will speak into our hearts that you will challenge us, that you will reveal things in us that we need to think about uh, and perhaps change. Lord, we pray for your anointing on Dan as he brings words to us that he feels are right. We pray that your Holy Spirit would be in him and move through him. Lord, we pray for the media team as they chat to people and pray for people, Lord, that you would anoint them as well and that you would just really speak to us this morning as we hear from Dan. In your name, Father. Amen. Well, thanks for that, Kirsty. Um, yes, so here I am. Thank you for inviting me uh, to this morning. Uh, pioneering, I am pioneering. This is the first time that I've ever taught or preached off a couch. And uh, it's good for Kirsty to draw attention to socks. Um, when I visualized this, I thought it would be framed around my head. And I'd have all the words next to me, and I didn't realize that you'd be able to see my bright green socks. <laughs> um, I thought it would be a bit like I had an interview uh, before summer for an internal vacancy, and it was over Zoom, so I had my shirt and tie on, so they could see that, but my shorts on underneath, you know, so I didn't think you'd be able to see the whole of me. Um, so, <laughs> enough about me. What are we, uh, what am I looking at today? So, um... Uh, what I'd like to talk about is Jesus then and us now. So really explore uh, how Jesus was in the environment around him, how he interacted with people, what his mission was, and then look at us now in our culture and what, how we can respond to that. Um, so what kind of picture have you got of Jesus? I think um, when I was much younger, um, my picture of Jesus was a bit like this. He was uh, really gentle and kind. Uh, he'd look after the little lambs. He'd bless the children. Um, and I think from looking at some of the Christians I knew when I was younger, uh, they'd do whatever was necessary to help. But they were also a bit of a walkover, some of them a bit soft. Is that your image of Jesus? That he's kind? and loving, but also a bit soft and a bit, a bit of a walkover. Uh, it is some people's uh, view of him. Um, obviously not many of us. So what do we know of Jesus and his background? Um, we don't know that much, really. Uh, we know he was born of Mary and Joseph, and that he was a son of a carpenter. Um, we know that he lived most of his life and um, raised in Nazareth, uh, in the area of Galilee, up in the north of the country. 
Uh, and we know that he wasn't white uh, with blue eyes. Uh, he, he was a, of Middle Eastern descent, and he'd probably look a bit like somebody from Palestine now. Uh, we know from uh, Isaiah in the Old Testament, a prophecy about him, that he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Um, uh, so how did this man with no family name, no riches, who had a really broad northern accent, um, how did he change my life and change the world as we know it? Um, when he came to Jerusalem, it's a bit like um, somebody from a comprehensive school uh, from the outskirts of Newcastle coming down to London and interacting with the private, posh, educated elite. So how did a man like that, from such a lowly background, uh, who wouldn't be recognised in society, how did he change everything? Um, so, one of the first things uh, that we read about Jesus um, when he was coming into his ministry, he had that time in the desert where he was tempted by Satan and really tested about his path and his mission. And one of the very next things that he did after that was he went to his home synagogue and he used Isaiah 61 and he proclaimed uh, that the Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. His whole, whole mission is there to bring freedom, and as Ollie was saying earlier, to heal brokenhearted. He's there for the poor and the unjust. And when he announced that to his home synagogue, where people knew him and said, today it has been fulfilled, they wanted to kill him because he was equating himself as the Messiah and with God. They tried to throw him off a cliff. And he knew he'd get that response of the people he knew him, but he still stood up and proclaimed it. So there's so many different stories we could look at uh, for how Jesus interacted with people, but I just want to pick on one particularly. Um, and that was this from John 5. Uh, so I'll just read out um, what it says there. Uh, Soon another feast came around and Jesus was back in Jerusalem. Near the Sheep Gate in Jerusalem, there was a pool, in Hebrew called Bethsaida, with five alcoves. Hundreds of sick people, blind, crippled, and paralyzed, were in these alcoves. One man had been an invalid there for 38 years. When Jesus saw him stretched out by the pool and knew how long he had been there, he said, do you want to get well? And in the New King James Version, it says, wilt thou be made whole? So Jesus looks at us and he sees us. He knows us. He knows how long we've been sitting and contemplating and struggling with different parts of our life. He fully knows us. And he might be saying to you today, do you want to get well? It seems like a silly question that this man who'd been there 38 years, next to this pool that hopefully could heal him, did he want to get well? Jesus is asking us, do we want to be well? Do we want to be whole? Then it, it says, the sick man said, Sir, when the water is stirred, I don't have anyone to put me in the pool. By the time I get there, somebody else is already in there. Which is a really valid excuse, isn't it? If you're an invalid, um, you can't walk. You need somebody to carry you there. 
Um, but Jesus said to him, get up, take your bedroll and start walking. The man was healed on the spot. He picked up his bedroll and walked off. So when we've got issues and problems and things that are holding us back, uh, we can easily think of very valid excuses for why uh, we're in that situation and haven't moved on. Um, but just listen to Jesus. Is he saying to you, just get up and walk through this issue? He's with you. He can heal you, whether it's thinking or physically. Uh, he can walk through those false assumptions. And I won't read on in that passage, but Jesus did this on the Sabbath. And um, once the man had identified him, the authorities were really annoyed with Jesus that he was breaking the Sabbath rules. Um, Jesus didn't just conform to the social norms and niceties of the day. He was interested in the person. He loved the person and wanted uh, the person to be whole. No matter what the society said was acceptable and normal, he was always interested in that individual, that person, and setting them free from what's holding them back. So, um, when we look at wholeness and wellness, there's lots of different aspects, isn't there, um, in us for that. Jesus wanted to bring wholeness uh, to that man. He wants to bring wholeness to us and to people around us. Uh, he wants to align us with his Holy Spirit and the Father when we are one with him and we're one in mind, spirit, and body all aligned, then we can be whole. And his whole ministry, when you look at how he interacted with people, uh, Jesus was tattling different parts of this wholeness with the people he came across. Uh, so if we just looked at body, um, there's a couple of different occasions, the 5,000 and the 4,000, where Jesus recognized people were hungry and needed feeding physically. So he was sorting out body problems. Um, There's so many different people that were, had ailments and illnesses that he healed their illness so they could then be made whole. And if you look at the spiritual side of things, quite often he would then, either way around, say your sins are forgiven and you are healed. He was interested in the whole person, making them well. He prayed for people. He didn't judge people. He forgave people. Um, he forgives us our sins. He deals with our spiritual needs. And then with the mind, quite often he would listen to people and let them talk about what they thought. Sometimes, like in the rich young ruler, he would question and get them to explore what they knew and pull out truth. Other times, he would advise or uh, confront and correct. Um, he saw the person in front of him, and he said he would only do what the father was doing. He used whatever God was showing him for that person to um, unveil wellness in their minds. So... It's amazing how he interacted with people. There was no set way. It was about that person. He set us um, a really amazing example of servanthood, didn't he? In Philippians, it says uh, he was God who could do everything, and he became nothing. Uh, but he physically showed us that. Um, I've been reading books over the last few years about like the culture and the context of the times and there was still slavery in uh, the Jewish society at that time even the Jews had slaves and there were Jewish slaves who would be sold into uh, going to slavery because of different conditions um, but because of the year of Jubilee they might have got released etc and then there were slaves from other cultures now washing feet 
uh, with all that dung and mud and everything else and being impure um, was not, they'd only use slaves who were from other cultures. They wouldn't even use Jewish slaves to do that. And by uh, Jesus washing the feet of his disciples, he was showing that he was the lowest of the low um, in that moment. And he was showing what true uh, servanthood is. He was the greatest leader there's ever been, but he would lower himself down to nothing to show um, the proper servanthood and humility. And that's his example to us. So, um, what about the people he interacted with? Who did Jesus interact with? Um, Well, you've got to say it was all segments of society. Um, In the culture, he was very positive with women. He had a lot of women in his supporters who actually financially helped him and followed him round and had a voice. Uh, His disciples were fishermen, tax collectors, even a zealot. Um, uh, He touched people that were impure, that you weren't supposed to touch. He interacted with leprosy and skin complaints. Um, He uh, went for meals with Pharisees and tax collectors, the rich people in society, even so much that uh, he was accused of being a drunk and a glutton. He wasn't worried about what people thought of him. Uh, I imagine he was a great conversationalist and found out about people. He wanted to be with people and know them and help them. Uh, He interacted with lots of different races, not just uh, the Jews. Uh, There's different bits where he interacts with Samaritans, and particularly that uh, Samaritan woman at the well, where he broke all conventions of being alone with a woman who was foreign because of her and what she would go on and then say to others. Uh, He healed a centurion, Roman centurion's servant. Um, He interacted with other races. He treated everybody uh, well and with love, all segments of society, because he was confident in who he was. He was out for everybody. Uh, So let's just pause and think about our uh, lives and our relationships. God has placed us where we are, and we don't need to manufacture anything. We've already got loads of relationships. We've got our immediate families, our wider families, our uncles, aunts, and nephews and nieces, and grandparents and grandchildren. Uh, We've got this body of people, our church, that we interact with and are part of. We've got all our work colleagues, uh, our friends and acquaintances, our neighbours. So just think at the moment of all those people and what you bring to their lives. God has placed you to help. Uh, Those people, it could be very small, just smiling and acknowledging them. It could be very big in providing for them or giving them groundbreaking advice or praying for them and and things happening. And Jesus was in the moment, wasn't he? Whenever he was uh, interacting with people, he was always in the moment, looking what the Father was doing. And we've got the Holy Spirit with us. So how how do we or how can we bring wholeness to the people we interact with? How do we already or can we meet their needs? And who do we or who could we go on to serve and how? Uh, just a small example from me. Um, during this lockdown period, it's been hard to relate to people, uh, particularly for a technophobe like me. Um, 
And I, I just decided I would reach out to different people. And one of the groups of people I reached out to was some old friends from university uh, for beer and cards. Yes. And um, that was quite popular, apart from the people that um, believe we're being spied on by the government. But anyway, that's another thing. Um, <laughs> so um, as I arranged this beer and cards night, um, it turned out that a good proportion of my friends uh, were lonely, were isolated, they didn't have people to talk to, one of them was seeing a counsellor, uh, one of them was going through marriage difficulties, and um, they really needed that. And even though things have got uh, uh, lessened now, uh, we've agreed that we'll carry on seeing each other every two weeks. And these are people that I only normally see maybe twice a year. Um, and there's a real strong feeling that we need to carry it on. Because in those times where uh, people go to the loo or go and get another beer, I've really been able to listen to people's issues and talk to them and support them, even in just a small way. So I just want you to take a moment now. And I want you to thank God for where he's placed you and what effect you do have on people's lives now. If we just took you out, just think how much less rich those people's lives would be. And I'd just like you to think, is there just one person that God's asking you to reach out to? Just to maybe chat or to listen, maybe to provide something, maybe to advise or to pray for. So just take a moment now to think about thanking for who you are and the effect you have. And is there just one person that you need to reach out to? So I'll just give you a minute or so to think about that before I move on. Okay, well, that, that was interesting. It's, it's really hard to weigh up when there's nobody here about whether that's the right time to carry on. But let's carry on. <laughs> um, so a lot of what I've just talked about there was Jesus and the individual and how he'd interact with people. Um, but he also uh, came to establish the kingdom of heaven, to overthrow the, the powers of darkness and powers and dominions and uh, give us a new way of living. Uh, he was a revolutionary at heart, a revolutionary of love. He taught us that rather than us seeking our own good, we should seek what's good for others. Rather than seeking revenge on people when people have wronged us, we should look at forgiveness. And rather than competing or comparing or hating other people, uh, we should be loving other people, even if they're our enemies. See, uh, Jesus wasn't here to win a popularity contest. Uh, on several occasions when he'd healed somebody, his instructions after he'd healed somebody was, don't tell anybody what's happened. He wasn't there to win popularity. Uh, when he'd uh, fed the 5,000, it says at, at the end of that that 
uh, people saw the sign that Jesus had performed and began to say, surely this is a prophet who has come into the world. And Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew. Satan himself uh, tempted him with being the king of the world and all the kingdoms under his feet. But he run from that. Uh, when he came to into Jerusalem in his last week, he came on the colt of a donkey. Um, like the lowest form of transport he could get. It'd be a bit like him approaching London on a moped or in a smart car. Um, when all the dignitaries are in their limousines with their outriders and bulletproof glass. He himself said, I do not accept glory from human beings. He wasn't out to be our, our, the king of the world as we see it um, politically. He was here to bring down the powers and dominions and get us to change the way that we live. So, when we're thinking of Jesus and like him being kind and gentle, he was also incredibly strong and courageous and brave. He challenged the authorities. So if you think of the people, the scribes and the Pharisees, the keepers of the law, um, they set up a whole system of proving to other people your holiness by following all the rules and the immense amount of rules there were too. But he wasn't interested in conforming and looking like he was holy. He would um, frequently heal on the Sabbath and break their rules. Their, their, his disciples ate with dirty hands. And he did all kinds of things that uh, played with the minds of these people. He called out their hypocrisy. So he, I can't recall any situations where he attacked an individual, but he attacked the institutions. Um, and he called out their hypocrisy for having the clean outside of a cup, do you remember that? And the, but they're not dealing with the dirty inside. They're not dealing with the heart issues, what God was calling him to. He stood up against all the people that would make him conform and revealed um, the hypocr hypocrisy of that system. Um, he had issues with the temple. Now, the temple is it's a bit complicated because it is like... Um, a spiritual thing and a political thing, but it's also the major source of the whole economy in Jerusalem and therefore Israel, because all Jews would have to come every year to pay their taxes, they would have to get sacrifices, um, and all those buying of animals, uh, where they lived, uh, having to uh, stay over and eat, etc., drove the economy of that whole uh, Jerusalem and therefore Israel. So whoever was leading the temple uh, had the economic might behind them and the power. And around the time of Jesus, there was just one family that had reigned for tens of years, uh, but with different brothers and brothers-in-laws taking own ownership of the high priesthood. Uh, so he, he attacked that institution and that's one of the things they um, accused him of at his trial that had really got to them about him destroy, saying he'd destroy the temple and then rebuild it in three days. Um, and then, of course, he called it a den of robbers and, and thieves. So he stood up to the economic powerhouse of the day, the political powerhouse of the Jews. And ultimately, that's one of the things that got him killed for us. Uh, and also, there was the um, there was the political, there was the overruling power, the Romans, uh, that were the ultimate authority in the land. And he he stood up to them and advised us. Um, so there's 
the, impo- the, strict, uh, the scriptures that Ben actually talked on a few months ago, looking at uh, turning the other cheek and walking the extra mile. Uh, and I've seen some stuff on that culturally. When you look at uh, the Romans, what they used to do when they were going to hit somebody was uh, backhand them across the face. And if they backhand them across the face, that was showing that they were superior to them, uh, that, the, you, that you were much lower if they'd hit you across the face. And then as you got hit across the face, the natural reaction then would be to get the other hand and hit back across the face. Um, and what Jesus was saying by turn the other cheek, it was actually sh- uh, getting you to turn your cheek so they couldn't backhand you again with the other hand. And the only way they could then hit you was full-on uh, punch in the cheek. But if you punch somebody in the cheek, what you were admitting was that person was an equal to you. So he wasn't advising violence, but a form of passive resistance. Uh, it's the same with walking the extra mile. When uh, Jesus said to walk the extra mile, Roman uh, soldiers were legally allowed to co-opt people and get them to carry their kit for a mile. Uh, but they weren't legally t- allowed to do more than that. So by you saying, I will carry it another mile, actually what you were doing was possibly getting that soldier into trouble because they were breaking the law of, of their own regiments, what they were allowed to do. So it's passive defiance of the system and getting uh, us to treat equally. And it's these kind of principles that Gandhi took and uh, Martin Luther King of passive resistance, not using violence, but getting people to acknowledge you as a person and that your cause is just, uh, and standing up to people without violence. And he birthed that uh, approach. So, Jesus was with the individual. He loved people and wanted to bring wholeness. But he wanted to change the institutions and the powers and authorities that held power over people's lives in a negative way. Uh, So when we look at our culture now, what are the things that are over us that maybe we need to look at in different ways? Uh, One of the biggest is uh, materialism, which is another word for our greed. we're in a culture that always wants the next thing, the next upgrade, the next best thing, to look good in society and to fit in. And Gandhi said, there's enough in the world for everyone's need, but not for everybody's greed. We're in a, w- a world now where mega corporations uh, are bigger than countries, uh, where quite a lot of them don't pay taxes, where they take our data And some of them have actually used that data to swing whole elections and mess around with our political power. And it's a bit like, uh, I've heard, probably said lots of times, uh, that Japanese thing about the fish swimming around in the water. Until you took the fish out of the water, it didn't realize there was such a thing as water. Uh, We're just used to um, our rich society and the way that it works. Um, and it is completely unequal. Uh, Here's a graphic I found uh, for America looking at um, how America would be divided if it was just by wealth. So just 1% of the richest people in America would occupy 43% of the land, and the next 9% would occupy 40% 40 of the land. So 10% of the richest people in America have got 83% of the wealth. And this is the richest nation in the world. Um, When you look at people who are leading these massive technological companies that bridge uh, countries, uh, just the 15 top ones of those have a combined income of 83 billion a year. Uh, That's more than the gross uh, domestic product of hundreds of different countries. How could that be right? Uh, There's a website you can go on to look at some of these about 
how long would it take for them to earn your wage? Now, I'm very well paid. I am rich. And I put my wage in there. And some of them earn my full salary in less than 30 seconds. How can that be right? And we found in this, in this time of COVID that the inequalities in our society are getting bigger. That these super rich people have actually got richer over this period, where there's other people getting poorer. Uh, when you look in our own country, uh, there's headlines about the poor skipping meals and being hungry. Before COVID, 2% of people in our country had uh, gone to a food bank. Now, that seems crazy to me that one in 50 people has used a food bank in this country in this age already. But during COVID, uh, there's been different surveys and between 5 and 10% of people, we think, now have had to use food banks. But we've got schemes from the government that... Uh, we can eat out to help out. So rich people like me can go to the sump and I can get a meal and get half the cost off. But there's people having to go to food banks. How can that be right? Now, I know that that's a bit simplistic and actually uh, by these schemes we can make the whole economy go and we could go into a negative spiral. So it's a lot more complex than I'm making out. But where are the schemes to help the weakest and the poorest? Now, I think we're really blessed in this country that largely we are, uh, we are governed well. Uh, no matter what party's in, in, in place, we're, we live in a quite a safe society that follows rules. Um, like if you go to Africa or the, uh, or the Middle America, Central America, you can't even drive down the road without nearly being in an accident. Um, you know, people are provided for pretty well. Our rules are pretty good. There can be justice for people, but still huge inequalities. And how do we respond to that? You know, we've got to think carefully about who we vote for, uh, even though there's not that much difference between the parties. Uh, if you like my mum, you could write letters to your MP and try and influence policy. Uh, we could join uh, pressure groups and actually make our voice be heard and stand up for the weakest in society. Um, a thing that's really affected me recently is the exams algorithm. Now, there was lots of political things about that. But for me, the thing that most media seem to have missed is this algorithm uh, that has showed that people in poorer areas have done worse is actually a mirror for how things normally run. When we look at that, what it is saying to us is there's a large proportion of inequality in our society. That if you're, the postcode of where you're educated is the best reliable measure for how you will do. Now, how can that be right in our country? Um, we've got lots of issues with the other in our society where people are excluded. Uh, women still are not paid equally to men. Um, black people in London are four times more likely to get arrested. Uh, we've got people getting excluded on sexuality and other things, haven't we? Um, how do we respond to the other? Uh, I was really proud of my son when he went to the Black Lives Matter um, rally in Burton recently and really listened hard to what was being said and stood with people of colour we need to stand up for people uh, and be, be for diversity and welcome and love people, no matter what their background or ethnicity or colour. And a huge issue that Jesus would be interested in is like the effect of our greed on the world. Uh, we're suffering with deforestation, um, global warming, our coral reefs are dying, plastic is going up. Uh, in the last year, Greenland lost a million tons of ice a minute for the whole of the earth as we heated up. Um, what are we doing to prevent the world 
uh, going down and down and look after it. We can take all our own personal actions. Um, but I'm not asking you to go and super glue your hand to a car or a train, but maybe we need to put some resistance up in some way. So, uh, just coming to the end now and looking back. Jesus, uh, this revolutionary in love who's transformed my life, is a complex man. He's kind and outspoken. He's gentle and strong. He's loving and courageous. He's a servant and he's a leader. He's our judge and he's the forgiver of our sins. If you look at him and how he treated people and how he fought against authorities. So our struggle isn't against flesh and blood, is it? It's against the authorities and the dominions of power and spirit of this age. So just as we finish, I want you to think about again, um, what effect is Jesus having in your life as you reach out to people already? Be thankful for what he does through you and how you affect people's lives. And think, is there one person that you need to reach out to now? And I want to think of, like, in this church, we're reaching out to our community. We've, we've renovated 63, haven't we? And the hope is we can start to help with some injustices in our community. We do the food bank, we help the YMCA, we help other countries, charities, through Libya and Honda. Can you just celebrate what God's getting you to do to help with injustices in our world? And maybe think, is there one thing that you could go and do after this talk to help injustices in this world? Fantastic. Thank you, Dan. Um, you right to do a song? Um, what we're going to do, we're going to just have uh, one more song. And as we sing together, I want you just to think about those things that Dan's brought. Think about the challenges that he's um, set out to us. Um, if you're looking at the chat, there's loads of comments there of just some of the reminders of what Dan was saying. So, um, yeah, we'll just have another song. You're the only right among the wrong. You're the only hope among the chaos. You are the voice that calls me on. Louder than every lie, my sword in every fight, the truth will shake.
us hear it. When you speak, the church awakens. We believe that change is coming. Holy Spirit, let us see it. When you speak, you scatter darkness. Light arrives and heaven Fantastic. Um, I hope that you've really been with us this morning and just enjoyed meeting with God and hearing from him. Um, I think it's, it's fair to say that, um, you know, the, the videos that we've had up to now have been really slick and just amazing, the quality that's come from our leaders, particularly um, Scott and Leanne and Dawn and Laurie, you know, how professional they've been in the way in which they've put the, uh, the, lives, uh, the services together, um, or so you would think. Um, what we would like to show you now is just how many takes it took to get that professional video that you've been watching, um, and actually what our leaders and their respective partners uh, were up to. So enjoy just a little bit of fun at the end of this service. Everybody. Hiya. Good morning, church family. Um, it's me again. <clears throat> I am with you. Ah. Good morning, church family. Uh, thank you, Esme, and <laughs> setting us off as we 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 start. Uh, oh, that was all going to be so good, then, and then I lost it. Welcome to TCC and intro Sue and Trev, take five. I love um, Philippians, the book of joy, um, known for, for the devil who fixes his heart and, and his love on us and cannot change. Hold on, start that bit again. Welcome to the Community Church in Burton-on-Trent. Uh, welcome to our online service. Um, it's really, we're really grateful for that. Picking up from the end of the statement, uh, take 497. <laughs> Philippians series four is Philippians three. No, stop, stop all that again. Right, start again. <coughs> <coughs> Thank you to the kids team and intro to Sue and Zach, take six. You know, can God really, oh, scrap all that, hold on, stop there. Thanks to Sue and Zach, into What's God Been Saying, take three. Scott, stop there, take it from... We'll just stop there. Because he's talking about the fact that while in our human experience, we are faced with change constantly. You know, our 
Um, oh. Through our experience so far as a church, and what what um, mm. we as the community church have seen that both of those Let's take that again. September will be September. <laughs> September will be our second. Sell it. Stop. Um, just, just so much, um, like a total. Um, Stop. Your people who would like to say hello. Aww. <laughs> Prayer and close. Take five. Take four hundred and seventy-three. Bear with. Absolutely fantastic. Hopefully you were laughing as much as we were. Um, so we're going to bring the service to a close now. Um, if you have any feedback, any comments, um, it's already been put in the chat, but please email trustees at tcc.org.uk and that will come through to um, us as trustees and we'll do our best to answer any queries or comments uh, that you may have. Um, thank you, a massive thank you. Uh, you can't see what I can, but all the people that are in the background making all of this happen and the hours of work that's gone into um, sorting all of this, we are just so grateful. It's been so much fun and so exciting to be together as a family again. Um, and hopefully you found that too. If it's your first time joining us, you've been really welcome. We love sharing our experiences with you. So I'm just going to pray and uh, then we will close the service. Father God, we thank you so much for this morning. Thank you that we can laugh at ourselves, but also it's all about you. Thank you for the words and the challenges that Dan brought. And we thank you for our worship team and the way in which they've just connected us with your Holy Spirit this morning. We pray, Lord God, as we carry on through the challenges that we face in this uh, different time, that you would help each and every one of us with whatever it is we need right now. And Lord, that we would look to those people that we can connect with, that we can bring your wholeness, your power, your healing to. And in whatever form that that comes, Lord, we pray that you would challenge us to reach out to some people this week. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you that we've been able to share this time together. Amen. Have a great week, guys. Thank you.